with Dexter, I'm excited to put something out there that, that answers some questions that have been floating around, which are essentially, what the hell happened to this guy? Hey guys, Pete here. There was a Dexter panel at the Summer TCA, and they did give away a lot of details and information about the upcoming revival, special event series, or if you prefer, Season 9. All in all, some really interesting stuff. Interviews with the cast and the creators, and accompanied by some new promo images and a new behind-the-scenes teaser reel with lots of new footage of the season. I'm going to talk about all of that, and some of it is somewhat spoilerish, although it is all promotional stuff at this point. But I will give you the warning, if you wanted to go into this season cold, this video isn't for you. In my last Dexter video, I talked about Jennifer Carpenter's return, reprising her role as Deb, and the popular guess was that she would take over for Harry as the person inside Dex's head who he works his stuff out with. This has now been confirmed, and they revealed that she'll be there right from the beginning. This is something that he's already worked out, and it's a part of his personality at this point. You see a couple of new shots of them together, and what's funny is that Clyde Phillips said that they were planning on keeping this as a big secret until John Lithgow gave it away. So just to be clear, Dexter was never seeing a vision or Harry's ghost or something like that. It was always something that he created in his head where he could draw on what Harry had taught him and try to make the right decisions. In season 8, he moved past this. He said goodbye to Harry. He didn't need him anymore. And now we know that Deb will take his place. So she's not just there for flashbacks or a cameo, but she'll be a cast regular for the season. The showrunner said, I think Deb represents a corner of Dexter's mind that we all have in our own heads that says, well, wait a minute. If you do this, then here are the consequences. And then you decide whether or not to do it, whether or not to pursue it. Jennifer Carpenter added that she sees herself playing an echo or an inconvenient truth for Dexter and said that she was really excited to come back and to take on the character this way. Clyde Phillips also confirmed that more original cast members are coming back beyond just Deb and Trinity, which so far they have been able to keep secret. I suppose this means we might see Angel, Quinn, Masuka, Hannah, Elway, Jamie, Astor, or Cody. I mean, that's about it as far as living people. And then, of course, there are a lot of dead ones that could show up in his mind. And I left Harrison out of this list on purpose because that was the other big thing they confirmed. Showtime posted this photo on their Twitter account of Jack Alcott and Michael C. Hall on set together with the caption, Harrison, is that you? It had been speculated that Alcott was going to be playing Dexter's son. And during the panel, they made this plain. Not only would Harrison show up in the very first episode, but that they wanted to make this one of the themes of the season, the father and son relationship. It appears that they're aging up Harrison a little bit. He would have been 12 to 14, I think, based on the timeline. So I imagine that he's a little bit older than that, considering they're saying that he tracked Dexter down. In the interview, they said his son always thought he was dead and then found out he was alive and has a great resentment. So part of Dex's story in this season is that he has a lot of work to do to win his son back and prove that he could be a good father. And I guess that we'll just have to see how that plays out because we have no idea how this is going to come together. The last we saw of Harrison, he was a young child. He had been taken to Argentina by Hannah. So there's a lot of story to fill in as far as how he found out that Dexter faked his own death. How a teenager can just travel wherever he wants, track down someone that doesn't want to be found. There's a lot of questions there. And there's also a lot of questions about what Dexter's been up to, but apparently they're not going to spend much time dwelling on that. Michael C. Hall said that he's basically been nomadic, saying again that at least in this period of time, he's trying not to kill. But obviously, he's going to be doing some killing because of what we've seen in the trailers. In the latest behind the scenes video, we can see him making a blood slide. We see him standing at the incinerator. There's definitely somebody inside and Deb's there with him. And one of the things they said that jumped out to me right away was that the entire thing happens in a period of about two weeks. So you have 10 episodes showing about 14 days, which could mean that there'll be a pretty hectic pace with all this stuff happening so quickly. They stressed that they wanted this to be something entirely new, that this wasn't just the ninth season of Dexter. 
Not only did they move away from Miami, but they also wanted to change things up in the way that the season was structured, where in the past they had the kills of the week and the one person he pursued throughout the whole thing, the big bad. This time we might see something different. And you're probably wondering about the ending. Is it a setup so that they can make more seasons? The Showtime execs said that they can't call it a limited series because it's already had a bunch of seasons, but that they see it as a limited event series. They had an idea for 10 episodes. They wanted to put everything into making those the best that they could, and therefore they weren't answering any questions about whether there might be more. They're saying things that make it sound like it's going to have a definitive ending. Things like, it's a proper finale for a brilliant series. And they also seem to be taking some responsibility for how it ended the last time. And then at the same time, they don't want to say anything about this ending, so it makes it seem like there's a possibility there could be more. Or even a spinoff or something like that. Clyde Phillips says that it's going to be satisfying and controversial. And you do have to wonder, if this is supposed to be a proper ending, if they came back to do that because people weren't satisfied with how it ended before, then they must have had an idea that would feel final. Dexter's living in this small town under an alias. He seems to have built a life for himself. And for that to be the case, he must have gone through some changes over the decade, give or take, since we last saw him in Oregon. That makes the setup feel like he's on the brink of just living out this normal life, and then things get turned upside down. They didn't give away much new information about the supporting characters. I talked about Clancy Brown's character, Dexter's new girlfriend, and the true crime podcaster in my last video. And it sounds like she doesn't show up in Iron Lake until a few episodes after Harrison arrives. It does look like there's another killer in town, and of course that would be of interest to the old Dexter. And there is a new shot of him hitting some unnamed character in the latest footage. It all looks pretty good, and the way that they're talking about it, it sounds promising. When I heard him declare that it'll be satisfying and controversial, my first thought was that maybe Harrison was going to take Dexter out. Although that might just be because I do want to see Dexter's story have an end, and none of the ways that might happen seem particularly controversial. I'm really not sure if they could pull that off, though. I mean, sure, there's the connection of them both being born in blood, with Harrison witnessing Rita's death, and Dex did abandon him with Hannah, which may not have been the most nurturing situation, plus the resentments, the whole sins of the father theme, but it feels like it would take a lot of work for them to get to where that would feel like a fitting conclusion. And I think rather than just rambling on, I'll put out a separate predictions video in the coming weeks to put all this stuff together. For now, I'll leave you with this from Michael C. Hall. I certainly do hope that watching the show is a satisfying experience for people who watched it originally and are curious about what happened to him. I certainly hope it does provide some definitive answers that aren't primarily mystifying to people. I'm looking forward to see what happens when Jim Lindsay gives into his urges and gives up the struggle with his dark passenger. Let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to and your theories about where this thing's going. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.